Hello everyone, my name is Ariel Nof and I will present the paper Sublinear DMW Style Compiler for MPC with Preprocessing. This is a joint work with Elet Boyle, Nip Gilbo and Yuvali Shai. So in this uh, work, we consider multi-party computation in the preprocessing model. In this model, the execution is divided into two phases, an offline phase, known also as the preprocessing phase, and an online phase. The goal of the offline phase is to produce correlated randomness, and it can be executed even before the inputs are known. In the online execution, the parties use the correlated randomness to compute the desired functionality over their private inputs. Another way to look at this model is to view the execution as an execution with a trusted delay who gives the parties correlated randomness, and then later uh, design a secure protocol to distribute the delay. Now, every MPC protocol can be modeled in this way, but this model is in particular useful in the dishonest majority setting which we consider in this work. In this uh, challenging setting where no one trusts no one, achieving secure multi-party computation requires using expensive tools. Tools that either uh, have a lot of communication or that are computationally expensive. However, in this model, we can move all the expensive machinery to the offline phase and obtain an online execution, which is fast, cheap, and information theoretic. Now, in this talk, we will mainly focus on the online execution and its efficiency, and we will look at two main metrics, the online communication cost and the amount of correlated randomness that the dealer needs to produce. The standard approach for MPC in the preprocessing model is to use Beaver triples. Here, the dealer gives the parties shares of a random multiplication triple, and these are used to multiply shared values in the online execution. Now, in this table, we give uh, the exact communication cost and the exact amount of correlated randomness per multiplication with this approach. And as can be seen, there are two variants for this approach, one with circuit-independent preprocessing and one with circuit-dependent preprocessing. When allowing circuit-dependent preprocessing, the dealer know, knows the structure of the, of the circuit, and therefore this can be used to uh, reduce the cost slightly. Furthermore, if we allow PRG-based compression, then we can give each party a seed from which he derives all his shares. But even in this case, we still need to give one element uh, per gate to one of the parties because a one share of A times B is fixed and is not random. So these are the costs uh, for semi owner security. To achieve malicious security, uh, the most uh, popular approach currently is the speeds approach, where the dealer also gives the parties an authenticated, an authenticated version of each of the triples by multiplying each value in each triple with a global random secret mask. The main advantage of this approach is that the online communication cost with, with malicious security is the same as the cost with similar security. However, the amount of correlated randomness grows. Specifically for large fields, it grows by a factor of two, but for small fields or for rigs, it grows, it grows by a factor of kappa, where kappa is the, the statistical security parameter, because the authenticated triple needs to be generated over an extension field with, si with size that depends on the statistical parameter. This is necessary to achieve cheating probability that is sufficiently small. A different approach uh, was first introduced in the Minimac protocol for small fields, and this approach achieves constant correlated randomness overhead that's, that does not depend on the, on the statistical parameter, and this is achieved by authenticating multiple triples together. But this comes at the expense of increasing the communication cost. So now the communication cost with malicious security is higher than the cost with semi honest security. So as can be seen from this slide, there is a trade-off between the communication overhead and the correlated randomness overhead uh, for malicious security. This raises the following question. Can we achieve malicious security where both the amortized online communication cost and the amortized amount of correlated randomness, randomness are the same as with semi-honest security, and of course without introducing any new assumption? And in this work, we give a positive answer to this question. And our main result is the following. So given an arithmetic circuit C, which is defined over a finite field or over the ring of integers modulo 2 to the k, then we can take every natural semi-honest MPC protocol which computes C, and I will explain what natural means later, and we can compile it into malicious security where both the additional amount of correlated randomness and the additional amount of communication are logarithmic in the size of the circuit 
times some statistical parameter kappa. This implies that amortized over the circuit, both the communication cost and the amount of correlated randomness per multiplication gate remain the same as for semi random security. The high-level framework of our solution works as follows. First, the parties additively share their inputs. Then they run a semi random protocol to compute the circuit. Now, addition gates can be locally computed because the secret sharing scheme is linear, but the parties need to interact to compute multiplication gates, and therefore they need to verify that all multiplications were computed correctly. Our main contribution is a new verification protocol to verify correctness of all multiplications with logarithmic amount of communication and with, with logarithmic amount of correlated randomness. If this step uh, ends successfully, then the parties proceed to reveal their outputs. Otherwise, the parties are bought. Now, what are the requirements from our semi-honest protocol? So we have two requirements. First, that it, need, it needs to be additively secure, meaning that the adversary can only add errors to the wires. And the second requirement is star sharing compliance. And I will explain later what it means. But the main point is that many secret sharing based semi honest protocol, including Beaver style semi honest protocol, satisfy these properties and therefore they, ca they can be used as the underlying semi honest protocol in our framework. So from now on, let's focus on our verification protocol. The main meaning block that we, that we use is zero knowledge fully linear proof systems, a notion that was introduced, introduced by Bonnet et al. in Crypto 19. So here we have a prover and a verifier, and the prover holds uh, a secret input X, and he wants to prove some statement over X. And the prover and the verifier interact in multiple rounds, and it, in each round, first the prover outputs a proof, pi i, then there are, there are public coins that are being chosen, and then the verifier can query both the input and, and the proof, and based on the answers to the queries, he decides whether to accept or reject. But the main property here is, is, is that the verifier is only allowed to run linear queries on the proof and the input. This is why this, these proof systems are called fully linear. And of course, we can define completeness, soundness, and zero knowledge in the standard way. Now, from this abstract building block, we can derive a very useful tool called distributed zero knowledge proofs. Here we have uh, multiple verifiers, and the input X is distributed across the verifiers, or in our case, X is secret shared across the verifiers. So now we will ask the prover to take the proof that is generated by the prover in the fully linear proof system, and also secret share it across the verifiers. So now the verifiers hold shares of both the input and the proof. Now if the secret sharing scheme is linear, then since the queries are also linear, then the, part, then the verifiers can simply query independently their shares of the input and the proof and obtain a secret sharing of the answers to the queries. And then they can simply exchange their shares of the answers and obtain the answers to the queries. Now, what Bonnet I showed is that if X is robustly shared across the parties, meaning that the shares held by the, by the honest parties are enough to reconstruct the secret, and if the statement to be proven is a degree two polynomial over the input X, then there exists a distributed zero knowledge proof where both the communication and the number of runs are logarithmic in the size of the input. And, and soundness holds even if a subset of the verifiers collude with the prover. Now this tool is very useful to achieve malicious security in MPC, because in order to achieve malicious security, we need to prove that all multiplications were computed correctly. Now, multiplications are degree two computations, and now after the parties uh, have computed the circuit, they hold a secret sharing of the inputs and the outputs of each multiplication gate. So this is what, and this is what we need in order to apply the distributed zero knowledge proofs machinery. And indeed, uh, this tool was used in the honest majority setting uh, in previous works to achieve malicious security with very uh, low cost, relying on the fact that in the honest majority setting, the secret sharing is inherently robust because the shares held by the honest parties are enough to reconstruct all the secrets. Now, when we move to the dishonest majority setting, uh, this raises the question how to achieve the same robustness and without increasing the amount of correlated randomness per multiplication. 
So to solve this uh, challenge, we have two main technical ideas. First, we define a robust secret sharing scheme using the dealer, which we call star secret sharing. Star secret sharing. And then we show how to maintain this scheme and the robustness that it brings throughout the verification protocol. And the idea here is that we use the dealer as one of the verifiers in the distributed zero knowledge proof. So now let's look into the details. So what is this uh, mysterious star secret sharing scheme? So the idea is very simple. For each uh, secret X, each party will hold uh, a mask of the, um, the masked secret and an additive share of the mask, and the dealer will hold the, the, the shares of the mask, and therefore he will know the mask. Now this secret sharing scheme is robust because because, we, because uh, the shares held by each party and the shares held by the dealer are enough to reconstruct the circuit. And in particular, an honest party and the dealer can reconstruct the circuit. Now, of course, uh, this secret sharing scheme is not new and, is, and it is in fact used in many uh, semi-honest protocols, including Beaver style protocols. So the challenge that remains is how to maintain this invariant and the robustness also in the verification protocol. So how the verification protocol works. So the goal of the parties is to verify that for each multiplication gate with inputs x and y and output z, that z minus x times y equals zero. Now we can replace each secret with the masked secret, which is known to the parties, plus the mask, which is known to the dealer, the dealer and take a random linear combination of, uh, of all these equations where each equation corresponds to one multiplication gate and, and obtain one expression that needs to be checked by, uh, by the parties. And here the alpha k's are random coefficients that are chosen by the parties at the beginning of the verification protocol and become public. Now if we look at this expression that the, that the parties want to check equality to zero and open it and do all the algebra, we can split it into three parts. The first part contains only masked values, and therefore uh, each party can locally compute it. The second part contains only masks, which are known to the dealer, and therefore can be computed locally by the dealer. The third part is basically a, a sum of products between values that are known to the parties and values that are known to the dealer, but are also additively secret shared to the parties. And therefore, the parties can locally compute an additive sharing of this value. Now, let's denote uh, the first part by lambda, the second part by omega, and the last part by gamma. This implies that the parties wish to verify that lambda plus omega plus gamma equals to zero. Now, indeed, in the first step of our verification protocol, the parties do the local computation. Each party computes uh, lambda and his share of gamma which we denote by gamma i, and the dealer computes omega. In the second step of the verification protocol, we ask each party to secret share gamma i using our star secret sharing scheme. This means that each party will broadcast uh, uh, the mask gamma i, where the dealer knows the mask. Now, of course, a malicious uh, pi may cheat and secret share an incorrect value. So in the third step, we ask each party to prove that it shared the correct gamma i. And we will go into the details of this step in a minute. If, ste if this step uh, passes successfully and all the proofs are accepted, then the parties proceed to the next step where the dealer uh, sends the sum of all the masks that were used to the parties and then the parties in the last step can uh, check equality to zero to the final value. If the equality holds, they know with high probability that all multiplication gates were computed correctly Otherwise, they know that uh, cheating took place and they can abort the protocol. Now let's go into the details of the third step where each party proves that the gamma i he shared is the correct gamma i. So basically each party pi needs to prove that the following equation holds. The idea is that we take the uh, mask gamma i, we add the mask and subtract from it the gamma i that should have been computed. So if party pi acted honestly, then the result should be zero. And now, if we look at this expression without even understanding it, we observe two things. First, that this is a degree two polynomial over the inputs. And remember that the alpha k's are public constants at, 
this stage. And second, that each input to this expression is known to either all the parties or to the dealer. Specifically, the values that are marked in blue are known to all parties, and the values that are marked in yellow are known to the dealer. And we can use this fact in the following way. So now we will run the distributed zero-knowledge proof and use the dealer as one of the verifiers. Now, the parties will uh, define a vector of inputs where they take all the inputs and replace all the inputs that are unknown to them by zero. The dealer will do the same thing. He will define a vector of all inputs and replace all the inputs that are unknown to him by zero. However, since each, each input is known to each of the parties or to the dealer, this implies that now each party and the dealer hold a two out of two additive sharing of the inputs. Now we will ask to share the proof in the same way, meaning that it will send the masked proof to the parties and the dealer will hold the mask. So now what we get is that the input and the proof are additively shared between each of the parties and the dealer. So now we can ask each of the parties and the dealer to run the linear queries on his shares of the proof and the input, and this guarantees us that now the, the parties and the dealer will obtain a star secret sharing of the answers, meaning that the answers are, are shared between each party and the dealer. So now for an honest party to receive the correct answer, he only needs the information held by the dealer. This means that even if all the other parties collude with the prover, then still the honest, the, this one honest party will receive the correct answer to the queries. And this is what eventually uh, leads to the soundness that we require. So let's sum up what we get from this process and what we get from using the dealer as a verifier. So since each piece of information is known by an honest participant, which is either an honest party or the dealer, this is what gives us robustness throughout the process and this is what leads to soundness even if uh, all the other parties collude with the prover. And since the statement to be proven is a two-degree polynomial, then we can run the distributed zero-knowledge proof with logarithmic amount of communication in the numbers of multiplications to verify. Now, since communication is logarithmic, then this implies that also that the communication from the side of the dealer who acts as a verifier is also, is also logarithmic in the number of multiplications to verify. Now, since the dealer performs computation only over random data, this implies that he can pre-process its computations, and then all the messages that he needs to send as a verifier, he can, he can give it as, as, as correlated randomness to the parties with logarithmic size. And this is what uh, eventually leads to our solution. So if we go back to our verification protocol and estimate its cost, then the first step is simply local computation. In the second step, each party needs to secret share one uh, single value, and therefore the communication cost is constant. In the first step, we have n proofs, and the cost of each proof is, uh, logar is logarithm of the number of multiplication to verify. In the, in the fourth step, uh, the dealer needs to send constant amount of data, and therefore the communication cost is again constant, and the last step is local computation. So overall, the communication cost of the verification protocol is logarithmic in the size, in the number of multiplication to verify times the number of parties. Now in the paper, we also give a concrete instantiations to, our, to the building block used in our uh, protocol. In particular, we show how to implement the distributed zero knowledge proof in the dishonest majority setting with high efficiency as can be seen uh, from the numbers we show here. And remember that uh, if, we, if the computation is carried out over uh, Boolean circuits or over rings, then the verification protocol needs to, needs to be uh, executed over an extension field, uh, which size that, that depends on uh, uh, the security parameter kappa. However, since uh, kappa is independent of the size of the circuit, the overall uh, cost of the verification protocol remains sublinear. In addition, we, uh, we can add the cost of our verification protocol to the cost of the Beaver style semi-honest multiplication protocols that we saw at the beginning of the talk and obtain the over overall costs to compute circuit C with malicious security uh, shown in this table. 
Now it is worth mentioning that we can also use the recent result for efficient PCG-based compression to compress the correlated randomness uh, for the semi-honest execution, and then combining it with the sublinear correlated randomness uh, uh, of our compiler, we can get overall sublinear correlated randomness to compute uh, a circuit C with malicious security. Finally, uh, a few words about distributing the PLR. So in the paper, we do not uh, design a protocol to distribute the dealer. However, we estimate the cost of using a generic MPC protocol to distribute the dealer. The idea here is that we represent the dealer as a circuit and then use a generic MPC protocol to compute the dealer's circuit. And the cost of this approach is, uh, depends on the number of multiplication gates in the dealer's circuit. As, as we can be seen here, uh, the number of multiplication gates is, depends on the number of parties, but for small number of parties, it is almost equivalent to the size of the original circuit. And this implies that even when using a generic MPC to compute the dealer circuit, the costs are still reasonable. And we leave the question of optimizing uh, uh, the dealer's work for designing a, a specific protocol to distribute the dealer for future work. So with this, with this, I will end my talk. Uh, thank you very much for watching and listening.